Welcome in, everyone, to the UWF Football Show. I'm Will Kennedy, along with UWF Head Football Coach Caleb Nobles. And uh, great to have you here and, and be ready to start a season. So here we go. Something new, something a little bit different. This guy knows the program, knows the facility here. We're glad to have you back. No, it's great to be back. I'm, I'm excited. We're finally seven days away from kickoff. We're getting close. And uh, can't wait to get back on the turf and be ready to play somebody else. Let's talk about your offense a little bit. We'll break down the offense, we'll break down the defense, and we'll talk about the first opponent. Of course, the first game, September 1st, Kentucky Westland coming into Penn Air Field and an opportunity to get the home crowd in here and all that. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But let's talk about your offense, and it kind of all starts at quarterback. And Pee Wee Jarrett, Byron Pee Wee Jarrett returns. Obviously, you've gotten to know him through the spring. He was unable to practice in the spring coming off surgery last year. Veteran, you've talked to him about leadership, and he, he's a different leader now. No, he certainly has embraced that leadership role. He, he knows that uh, last year it sounded like he was trying to earn his voice and wanted to make sure that, you know, he didn't jump too far being the starting quarterback too fast. But now he knows that I mean, he's the starter. He's the guy that uh, a lot of people look to for leadership by example, but also by voice. And I've been challenging him a bunch just to uh, make sure he, he knows that his, his voice carries weight. Uh, and so he's done a great job of answering that call. And obviously the talent there can throw it a mile and, and be a great athlete running. So uh, he's ready to he's ready to not be a, a, a just a scout team guy and uh, not being able to take uh, you know, live hits. He's ready to hit somebody and, and be able to go through a lot of stuff. So he's excited to get going. How will the running game maybe be different than what we've seen in the previous six seasons? You know, yeah, no, CJ's obviously a great player. He, you know, did a lot of great things last year. He was uh, one of the leading rushers as far as touchdowns in the conference and nation. So uh, a great player, great talent, uh, somebody that obviously needs to touch football a lot during a game. And so uh, he does a great job of being creating electric plays, creating big plays. Uh, then you got guys like Jamontez Woods, you got Jalen Bussey, you got Dar Daryl Garcia, who uh, you know do a great job of, of taking the reins and, and making big plays whenever their numbers called. Maybe a little more power in the running game. Yeah, like smash mouth, yeah. you know, old some school. downhill stuff. But obviously, you know, we got a lot of good athletes in that room that, that are able to get the ball on the edge and, and you know take it one touch to the house. So uh, excited just to be able to you know do a little bit, a couple different wrinkles that I've learned over the years, run game wise. That I like taking pride in running the football. There's a legacy of receivers here at this university. I mean, we, we could list off the names, but there are guys that have contributed to national championship appearances, winning titles, setting school records, all that kind of stuff. I uh, lost a great one in David Durden, who, you know, is trying to make the NFL. We wish him a speedy recovery from an injury there. But you get Caden Leggett back, and you've got some other names that are familiar to the room. And then you're adding some some pretty talented and athletic bodies to your group. Yeah, obviously being a former quarterback and calling <laughs> plays, I like having tall, long receivers that can run. So... Uh, Caden Leggett obviously is, a, is an elite speed guy that can run and take a top off, but also a really good possession guy that uh, finds ways to go get the football, which is you, you, sometimes you can't teach that stuff. You just had a knack to do it. Um, and you got guys like Jacoby Quillen, who obviously played here last year and, and, and had a good season. Kind of, we're expecting a lot of good things out of him, long body that can run. You got Mystical McGee who's returning, Zach Off returning. Add a couple guys like John Giles and KJ Franklin, who are complete different players in their own right. John Giles, 6'4, 215, mm -hmm. can run with the. And run like the wind and go led the country and block. Looks like a defensive year. end does. running around. It looks like a linebacker, receiver. a DM playing wide receiver. So Steve Sonier, offensive line coach, uh, one of the best offensive line coaches you're going to find anywhere at any level. And no matter what he's got, and you know whether he's got nothing or he's got ten guys coming back, he's going to find a way to get them together and make them work. We've had a really good camp so far. Progress of the line that we're trying to you know find out who long term depth is and all that. But uh, you know I've really been pleased with how they played. Obviously Jacob Bruce and Chop up the tackles have yeah. done a great job. Oaks type, you know, with a lot of returning experience, starting a lot of games. Uh, like Nash Nelson's had a good fall camp. Colton Beasley's had a great fall camp. Uh, guys that we, we expect and know can do some really good things for us. One of my favorite football mantras, you're here to practice, you're here at the games if you're close enough on the sideline, play this play. Play this play. Coach Sonia's right. going to yell that over that's and over. Right. It's a great, simple way to look at the it's game. music to my ears when I heard it the first time back. That's a breakdown of the offense with, with an offensive guy, former quarterback, offensive coordinator type guy. We're going to talk defense in the next segment. You do that, right? You, oh, you yeah, talk absolutely. I watch it as a head coach, too. Yeah, All right, we'll take sure. a little break and be back on the UWF football show. Are you ready? UWF football is back. The Argos kick off the season Friday, September 1st, hosting Kentucky Wesleyan at Penn Air Field. We want you to wear white to support the Argos. Kickoff is set for 6 p.m. Tailgating starts at 2. Tickets can be purchased online at GoArgos.com. For those who sweat in determined pursuit, and those who meet the morning with a firm handshake and a smile, and breathe between stages of unwavering effort. Andrew 
News Institute for those who move. Welcome back into the UWF Football Show. Coach Caleb Nobles here along with Will Kennedy. And we're, we're talking about the season, kind of breaking the team down, let everybody get to know not just the new players, new coaches. We'll, we'll talk with Ron Dickerson coming up in the next segment a little bit. Everybody knows Coach Ron Dickerson. Coach Jamie, he's my guy. Let's talk defense a little bit. You bring in a new defensive coordinator, somebody that we're all getting to know and love. Wow, what great energy he brings. Cabell Connor, your D.C., with, along with his defensive staff, Coach Mello and others, Jordan Remza. They really are bringing a different energy. No, and that's what I challenged them with when I, when I got them all here together in January, February. I said, man, you know, we've been really good defensively us in the, in the history of UW football, and it's because we've been relentless effort, uh, relentless. You know, obviously Coach Doolin did a great job when he was here uh, and, and done a great job of putting pressure on the, uh, the, the offense. And so I challenged those guys, man, like that's the standard here. That's, just, that's what's expected here at UWF is a relentless effort, but also relentless energy. Let's start on the front of that defense, those, those guys up in the trenches that, you know, their job is to stop the run, get after the quarterback, all that kind of – a little bit of everything, right? you got to do it all. You brought in some bodies along the front. Some of them are maybe a little different than what Argo fans have seen in the past, more athletic, a little longer and leaner. Yeah, for sure. I mean, anytime you can get some long bodies that can get after the quarterback, that creates a little bit more. I've played quarterback and I've played versus long, uh, fast defensive end, and I promise you they think about it if they, they don't think they're safe in the pocket. So – uh, you know, just being able to, to create longer bodies, longer edge, just think of that. And now nah, we have a lot of guys from previous team that are returning that are really good players in their own right. And so just be able to mesh those things with new guys, new style and all that has been really good. Willie Jordan, Will Breland, Gael, Laurent. I mean, you've got Cody some, Lowe, yeah, yeah, that, that, Emilio, yeah. you know, all these guys that are coming back at linebacker. What a strong group. For sure. No, we got a lot of good returning experience there. A lot of games started, a lot of guys that have played really well the last couple of years being at UWF and, you know, even Cody being a young guy. Uh, you know, G's been here forever. It feels like he provides a lot of really good leadership. Older guy. Willie's great. Will Breland's awesome. Uh, I mess with him all the time. I said, I wish Will Breland played Will, but then I have Willie playing Willie. Uh, playing I, I Will, see, so. Somebody missed an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. We just need to yeah. sign a guy named Mike. And Mike, help and us Sam, out we're Mike and Sam, we're okay. Kind of like we talked about the defensive line. I look up and I'm like, that guy's a corner? Yeah. You know, 6'4", six, 6'1", six, <laughs> yeah. you know, oh, and yeah. you've been able to move some guys around. But I know there's some guys who are multifunctional, multi-talented in that defensive back. Yeah, for sure. A lot of kind of Swiss Army knives that we feel like can play multiple positions. And, you know, you cannot teach length at that position. You can't you can't coach that and teach it. You you recruit it, and then you sign the guys that can move as well with it. So we've, we've gotten some long body guys, long arm guys at corner, which I promise is tough as an offensive mm -hmm. coach to, to scheme against. So – uh, a lot of good guys that can run at a high level, and that you know that helps out to that in the back end right there. That's a look at the defense. In the next segment, I promise we will not forget because I always say punters and kickers are people too. <laughs> yep. We'll talk special teams a little. We'll hear from Coach Ron Dickerson Jr. and take a little look at Kentucky Wesley, and that's still coming your way on the UWF Football Show. Why do you love your favorite pair of jeans? What keeps you connected to your oldest friends? How do you know that the solution you seek is right for you? The answer is simple. It's the fit. And at Pinair Credit Union, we believe your finances should fit you perfectly. It's the right checking account for how you spend your time and money. It's the right loan for where you are and where you're headed next. It's local banking that's as comfortable as your favorite pair of jeans. So come join us at Pinair Credit Union. You'll fit right in. UWF football is back. The Argos kick off the season Friday, September 1st, hosting Kentucky Wesleyan at Pinair Field. We want you to wear white to support the Argos. Kickoff is set for 6 p.m. Tailgating starts at 2. Tickets can be purchased online at GoArgos.com. Third and final segment here on the UWF Football Show with Coach Caleb Nobles. I'm Will Kennedy with you. And let's talk about special teams. We've talked offense. We've talked defense. But it's three phases of the game. Coaches, you know, all the time you love to say they got to win in all That's three, right? right? Uh, special forces, it's been called in the past. You've got some talent back there, too. Griffin Sarah, one of the best kickers in the country. A fantastic young man. Wonderful story. Well documented about what he went through last year in the playoffs. But, uh, but one of my favorite dudes of all time, Steve Dawson, the Aussie punter, is gone. you got to get a new punter in there, you know, some new holders to kick and, and small snappers and all that. Uh, special teams, though, you got to have it. You know, we signed a punter in the Logan Gregory, who uh, is a great player from coming from Southeastern University, who uh, was on the top five guys in the country last year as far as punting on their level. Uh, and so he's done great in fall camp. He's, he's, he's earned the right to be the starting punter and does a great job. And uh, he had a couple during our scrimmage the night that were 50-plus yard punts. So. That obviously makes the play caller feel good. Obviously, I don't want to punt at all. Uh, but if we have to, it makes you sleep a little better tonight with a guy like that. And, and having a kicker like Griff, Sarah, any kicker that you can rely upon and you know, hey, we get inside, you know, his range is uh, kind of 50 and in. Kind of changes your thinking a little bit. And, you know, you get down in that uh, fringe area, you know, inside the 35, 30-yard line, you know, you kind of 
can risk it a little bit, like you're saying, just, you know, because you feel like you got a guy that's pretty automatic that's done it in high pressure situations. And so uh, he obviously makes, you know, makes me sleep a little better at night, you know, knowing we got a good guy who's pretty automatic in there. We don't want to give it away, but you got some good returners. You got some good athletes out there and some other good things that we go. And one of the guys, you know, that works with those return guys is Coach Ron Dickerson Jr. And we got a chance to sit down with with Junior, with Ron Dickerson Jr. and talk about coaching philosophy and, and who inspires him. You know, if you can do the little things, then you can have fun playing football because you love playing football. And so I really instill in the young men that I coach and the ones that I have the opportunity to touch is just do the little things, whether it's holding the door open for somebody, it's going to class, sitting in the first couple of rows, saying, yes, sir, no, ma'am. You know, those things carry you so far. And then when you get to do what you really love is play football, you don't have to worry about the outside voices. You don't have to worry about the problems. And so that's really what I still every day before I even talk about what route you run or anything else is, hey, just win the little thing battle and the great things will happen. Get your education because football is going to end one day. And that is so true. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you play in the NFL for 15 years. Get your education. And the reason why is because once you have your education, you can sit at the table with anybody. And they can't take that away from you. And if you want to keep moving up the ladder, the more books you read, the more education. And so a lot of guys don't understand it. They just think that because I play on Saturdays and Sundays, but then you can't sit at the table. You can't get that job. So get the education is the most important thing that you can get all the way through from you know, uh, Ken Hatfield and Marty Schottenheimer, uh, Tony Dungy, Jim Caldwell, my dad, Ron Dickerson Sr., just watching them be great men and how they represented the program, but also their family really struck a chord in something that, hey, I can maybe take the baton and, and also help young men. You love what you do, so you do what you love, you know, and it is a challenge for us coaches because we have to go out and you can't just get any guy, you have to get a guy or you have to get a guy and develop him. And the good thing is, is people wanna to come to this school because of the academic, academic standards and because of what we do on the football field. And so I think it's a great challenge for any coach, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I did stay is because the environment breeds itself and it gives you that environment that you can go and talk to any kid about coming here compared to going to another school. Ron's one of the one of the best and a great guy to have around. You mentioned like Steve Sonny, somebody with a lot of experience and, and somebody you can lean on. No, he's a great man, first of all. Comes with a great family. His kids are around all the time. Uh, you know, he gives me an example of what it's supposed to be like. Look uh, like a good father, good husband. Uh, and, and a lot of him and I have a lot of good conversations. Just he's been a head coach. He's got a lot of experience coaching, so he, he's somebody I can lean on as a, as a young coach, and I truly appreciate him. So it'll be a Friday night game, six o'clock kick. Normally Friday night lights are for high schools, but we're gonna do that this time around. Right. And uh, what do you expect from Kentucky Wesleyan coming in? A lot of times that first opponent, the fans won't know a whole lot about it, but you guys have had to dig. Of course, no, we've, you know, I've talked to our coach, Coach Young, a couple times, and great, great person, great man. He's in the first uh, couple years being a head coach as well. And so him and I talked for about 45 minutes back <laughs> in the spring, just, you know, hey man, just picking his brain on being a new head coach and all that. So uh, he, he's a great coach, done a great job there. Uh, they got a, a bunch of good returners that are back, quarterback, uh, you know, he's a good player that was back there. He, he was on the team last year. Some good alignment, some good skill guys that obviously got a, a pretty good running back that we think is going to uh, do some things, both offense, defense, I mean, off as wide receiver running back. And so uh, just overall some good talent. They got a couple good D linemen, rusher uh, type guys that get after both three-man front, four-man front. So, uh, you know, they got some really good secondary guys that obviously create some, some problems. So a really good team overall that we're excited. It'll be a good challenge for us to start the season. The band will be here. The students will be here. They'll probably stay all night after the game's over. All of our fans will be here. And Coach Nobles gets the chance to help, you know, continue to create these traditions. This is only year seven of playing football for UWF. Hard to believe. And the expectations are high. And we're looking forward to game one. Appreciate awesome. this first week. Thank you. We'll do this after each game at, throughout the fall, hopefully on into December. That's right. And as we keep rolling, we appreciate all of you watching and listening to the UWF football show. Don't worry. Forget GoArgos.com is your home for everything UWF athletics. We've also follow on social media, UWF football, all our other programs. We've got volleyball starting later this week as well. Their first match is on the 31st. They'll play September 1st as well. And then soccer on the road to start the season. They'll be home soon. Cross country's running before too long. Caleb and I will not be running with cross yeah, country. Yeah, no, this I will season, certainly not be. Even though he does have us some eligibility left, no, as do I. But not, we're, we're not done cross country. With that. <laughs> we appreciate you all. Add the Argo Armada app on your phones and tablets. And we'll talk to you next week on the UWF football show. Go Argos.